it's kind of weird, right? Because sometimes you just have an anime that you're like, you know what? I'll give it a chance. Let's see if it like has anything good at all with it. And it did. An anime question is Delico's Nursery. And I highly suggest to anyone out there that needs something to watch. Now, it's not action based or really cases, but I'll get into everything in a second. Let me at least get into the story first. So, the story first starts off with Delico sort of running into his own mansion and it's starting to be burned to a crisp, as well as a whole bunch of people around his mansion that has to slice and dice to get into his mansion. But once he gets inside of it, for some reason, in love of his life, Frida actually attempts to attack him and then she's stopped by Jahard. But Jahard inherently kills Frida, and by all this time, you, the whole time you hear this crying this crying from two single babies that's basically Frida as well as Dalako's kids and after this event happens some time passes by and we don't really don't know how much time but after this time passes by he just wants to take care of his kids instead of doing his duty of protecting the vampire world that we know it he's actually a vampire there's quite a few reasons why I do like Dalako's nursery I think one I do have to say is that questions that would take a very long time that get answered get answered relatively fast like finding out what happens in the mansion and why Frida inherently tried to attack her lover or the being that has known the Trump that is the head vampire or the god of the vampires in his universe. And the question sort of gets asked and my head is like, huh, is this like other shows where the head vampire has a connection to all the other people or all the other vampires that are in this inherent universe? And that gets answered immediately, yes. So like, if he dies, they all die. Or if he's feeling extremely saddened, which is really cool, Apparently they all attempt to do GTA 5 or like some of them just straight up die, which is which is a really interesting concept But I'm really glad that those questions get answered extremely fast because it gives me more faith and more hope That we're gonna see a lot more interesting stuff to come in this series because it's only six episodes in and I feel like we've had so much Information that's given to us that makes it feel like a sandbox And there's so many moving pieces that I can play around and figure out what is going on or what is gonna happen next But the number one thing I do have to give this show props for is the balance act it definitely has when it comes to the show and it's balance balancing act of the children as well as him actually having to go do his mission of like saving the Trump and making sure that the vampire world is still intact and it's funny too because I'm so infinitely more interested in him taking care of the children and seeing how they sort of grow up and mature in life but I am also still interested in the idea of like what they have to do to keep this vampire world safe like this will give you more of a reason to care for both of these constructing worlds it feels like I'm having a slice of life while I'm watching a mystery to see how the world is going to unfold for the vampires but with me starting off with the nursery part i want to go over is like it's so peak i am not gonna lie i just really love how he, the author of this just sets out all of the kids as well as all the parents and shows you how their different parenting styles sort of affects their kids and the issues they do have with them very like sometimes it hits a little too close to home with some of these kids i do feel a little bit of it just a little bit just a little bit just a little bit oh yeah i forgot to say that delico is also part of a secret organization that is served to protect trump because obviously if he dies the whole vampire society collapses as a whole but the thing is delico Delico isn't going back to this society or because he's the best of the best, of the best sure. obviously he's the best of the best but he's not going back because he wants to take care of his children after his wife told him to give them all his love and that's what he's doing right now but three elite members want him back so badly that they'll literally do anything just for him to come back and basically you found out that all three of these people don't really take care of their kids so Delico basically said okay bring your kids we're gonna take care of all of these kids at the same time do this agency thing and take care of these people that are trying to go after their god and kill them now let's talk about the kids and the parents and the relationship with each other and how either skewed or different that is from all of the other parents starting off with Gerhard and his son Angelo it's like a bittersweet thing when it comes to him and his son right because his son is very sweet boy he's a really really nice kid but the thing is his father is a bit of a hard aristocrat he sort of wants him to sort of not be in a child mindset he wants him to grow to be a really strong aristocrat sort of as fast as possible but the thing is with their relationship is one Angelo is still extremely young. He's still at least four years old. So he's actually able to still have that child mindset and that child way of thinking where he's like, oh, can we please play? Can we please go ahead and do something? Sort of giving Gerhard some time to actually change his ways as an adult or as a parent, you might say, instead of being more of an aristocrat, being more of a parent and giving his child more advice or giving his child more fun time or being more fun with him, whether it be playtime, whether it be telling him a story or whether giving him baths or something of the sort. All the important things the child might cherish when his more adult years or when he gets older. And that's sort of what Gerhard does. He actually slowly but surely is starting to change. He's actually wanting to do more stuff with his kid instead of letting what a nanny take care of the job or maybe uh, his mother take care of the job instead of him doing it himself and being a parent, a father. And also funny enough, if I had to say anything, it feels like this show is borderline a PSA to parents out there to saying that, hey, it's not too late. Treat your children out there with care because whatever you do now will 100% affect them in the future. Then there's also Dino 
Angelo and Theodore. Now, their relationship is semi-similar to Angelo and his father, Gerard, but the issue is he's actually seven years old. And he's also just getting force-fed to be, hey, you're supposed to grow up fast, you're supposed to be an aristocrat, even way more harsher than Angelo ever was. And having this happen for so long, that age gap, it sort of messes with his head. It messes with Theodore's way of thinking because he's so young. He wants to play. He wants to do all the things a child would normally do. But his father is so harsh on him that he thinks the aristocrat mindset is the way itself. He even hallucinates the idea of like, oh, I should really should be doing kid stuff, but no, 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 I can't. I can't do that. I have to be a grown-up. I have to be an adult as fast as I humanly can. Making it feel like he has the worst at anybody, and it's really sad. Even his father doesn't inherently realize that. He's like, oh, this is good. This is great. He's actually going to become an aristocrat or adult way faster, and that's not the good thing at all. I guess the best case, if anything, right now is to say my PSA, is that you should enjoy your youth. This is what I get from this. You should really enjoy your youth because if you don't, you're going to be full of regrets of what I should have been doing as a kid. All the stuff that is happening to you in your adolescence is extremely important. Regardless if this is your education, regardless if it's your freedom to play or your freedom to make friends or your freedom to do what you want as a child. It's all something that you cannot get back. And especially the show specifically says in a blink of an eye, the child can instantly be a teenager, then an adult, then they're in there already in their 30s you should enjoy yourself i think it's best said in one of the actors that uh, played dwight in the office where he said your 20s is your best years you should genuinely mess up a lot in your 20s so you're great in your 30s and i also want to add on to that and saying that a lot of people that watch me are more younger and when i mean more younger i mean 20s 30s 40s i still look at that as a very young age in my opinion right even though i myself is in my 20s you should enjoy your life and what you have going for yourself because you know again in a blink of an eye it could be your next 20s your next 30s your next 40s embrace your flaws and revel in the fact of acceptance because the person that knows you best is you i don't really have that much with enrique and his twins they don't really inherently have that much wrong with them that you can automatically see i guess if you can say they have a lot of freedom maybe it's not too great to have too much freedom but that's sort of what they have and we really haven't went into their issues or what's the problem with enrique and his twins that he does have but they seem cool so far we'll probably get into it later in the season then lastly we have the two main characters sons right where we have you are as well as Raffello. Now, it's mainly spotlighted as Raffello because you are still a baby, and Raffello's, I believe, four or five. And Raffello, I kind of feel for him because he probably feels like a middle child. He feels like he doesn't inherently have a lot of care for him because Delico has to take care of you are the most because he's a baby and from Raffaello's perspective It seems like he doesn't care for him He doesn't want to do anything with him even though he has to give all his attention to the baby itself But he doesn't understand it because he's a child and this is something where a balance act has to happen Where you have to give some of your care to your child as well as your other child that you do have No matter how old they are because if you do they are gonna feel like they are nothing or they're not as important in your life Because you're not giving them that attention that they need even when they are a baby even if they are are a adolescent or even if they are 18 but feeling like you've seen this a lot where they be like i said before with like a middle child where they feel like they're not really have much to do with them so they just sort of sitting there in the middle or that is just a new baby comes in and they feel like they're just put to the side they're like shelved they're like really nothing and could inherently lead to lashing out or being rude or disrespectful or just acting out because they're not getting that attention that they so crave then there's also the vampire side of things where i am extremely interested in they still give me more information every single time to keep my interest going like for example like i said before with the trump all the other vampires that are out there in the world that are trying to get to trump or try to change the world in such a way that will change it and affect the world forever and we we haven't had them a lot but i feel like we did have a few little bit of fight scenes that are here and there that look nice and it seems like if we get into a big fight sequence that is going to sort of kind of explode onto the screen it's going to go a little crazy if you will but if anything i highly suggest this go ahead and watch it give it a chance tell me what you guys think in the comment section like comment subscribe i'll see you guys in the next one goodbye